Hey Ramblers, today's video is going to talk about the parallel postulate and its implications on the angles formed when two parallel lines are crossed by a transversal. You may remember that we learned that if these angles were congruent, then the lines were parallel. Well, now we're going to be told that the lines are parallel. So what's true about the angles? The parallel postulate is the fifth of Euclid's five postulates. Now, you may remember Euclid. We spoke about him on the first day of class. He was the author of the Elements of Geometry, where he started with five ideas called his postulates, and the parallel postulate being the fifth one. Now, over the ages, the parallel postulate has kind of stood out from the others, and I'll show you why in a minute. And several thinkers decided to try to recreate Euclid's geometry without assuming the fifth postulate. In other words, they treated it as a theorem, and they just tried to recreate his geometry with the first four assumptions. So, um, as it stands, these other geometries came up with wildly different conclusions. And so, since we're studying Euclidean geometry, we're going to go through the parallel postulate. However, if you are interested in pursuing non-Euclidean geometries, I think you'd enjoy them. So you may want to check it out on Wikipedia or something. Okay, um, there's a lot of theorems today, so please take notes, pause often. Um, it's very important that you kind of make sense of all of this. All right, thanks for watching, and I sure hope this helps. Okay, Euclid's first five postulates can be seen here. We've looked at them at, on an earlier video, but does anything stand out is anyone a little different than the others? Wow, look at that. Gee, I could play a game with these the way I've got it. Why not? One of these things is not like the others. Which one is different? Do you know? Can you tell which thing is not like the others? I'll tell you if it is so. Well, I'll bet you guessed that this one right here was different. And of course, it is because it's a lot bigger than the others. You can see that. Mm, yummy, 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 yummy. Okay, let's take a look at this parallel postulate. It's been rewritten in modern times to be a little less obtuse than Euclid's original. And now we say that given a line and a point not on the line, there is only one line through the point that is parallel to the given line. Okay, what does that mean? Well, it means that suppose you're given line B and you're given point P. There is only one line through P that will be parallel to B. You can't have two lines through B that are parallel. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't have two lines through P that are parallel to B. So line A is that parallel line. All right, this is such an important thing that they've called it P5 because it's just gotten so much attention from thinkers over the years. Now let's take a look at what we can do with that postulate. What theorems can we um, draw from it? What conclusions? Well, let's see this first theorem. And it says that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then each pair of alternate interior angles created are congruent. The shorthand of that is just parallel lines imply alternate interior angles congruent. All right, maybe it's true. Let's take a look at the proof. The proof is a proof by contradiction, and it reads something like this. Since we know that we're trying, we, we're given that the lines are parallel, so the conclusion is that either angle one is congruent to angle two, this angle here, congruent to angle two, or it's not. Since it's a proof by contradiction, we're going to assume that it's not congruent to angle two. So there must be another line, C, that intersects the transversal at P in such a way that it creates an angle, an alternate interior angle up here, that is congruent to angle two. So in other words, this angle here would be congruent to angle two. But we know that congruent alternate interior angles imply parallel lines. That's what we learned in the last video. So C must be parallel to B. But then line B is parallel to two lines through point, a, point P, line A and line C. 
and this contradicts the parallel postulate, which says you can only have one line through a point that is parallel to a given line. So this contradicts our assumption that angle 1 is not congruent to angle 2, and so it must be false, and angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. Okay, so let's look at what all that means. It means that if angle 1, or if, if A is parallel to B, then angle 1, the alternate interior angle, is going to be congruent to the other alternate interior angle at 2. Okay, so what of it? Well, here's where all the extra theorems come in. You don't need to have all the postulates of Euclid memorized, but you should be familiar with the fifth postulate. It's pretty important. And I'd like you to take careful notes and make sure you have each of the next five um, theorems down. We've looked at what alternate interior angles are. For instance, angle 3 and angle 5 would be alternate interior angles, angle 4 and angle 6. And since I'm given that these two lines, line L and line M, are parallel, I know that the alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. That's what we just proved. All right, so let's start there. That if parallel lines imply alternate interior angles congruent. Now, how about alternate exterior angles? Well, it's pretty easy to prove that if angle 4 and angle 6 are congruent, then their vertical angles at 2 and 8 will also be congruent. So, if lines are parallel, then alternate exterior angles are also congruent. Okay, let's move on. How about corresponding angles? Well, with corresponding angles, we see that Let's take an example, angle 1 and angle 5, that if the lines are parallel, then corresponding angles are also congruent. And that's not too hard to prove, because we started out with some alternate interior angles congruent, angle 3 and angle 5. We proved that by contradiction. So angle 3's vertical angle is angle 1. And so it's clear that angle 1 and angle 5, those corresponding angles, will also be congruent. All right, so let's move on then to the same side angles. Same side interior angles like 3 and 6. Well, those aren't congruent, of course, but they do add up to 180. No matter how we manipulate the figures, those two angles always add up to 180. That never changes. Okay, so same side interior angles. If you know the lines are parallel, then those same side interior angles will be sub. And by the same reasoning, same side exterior angles is also true. So let's erase these, 3 and 6, and take a look at some same side exterior angles. And you'll notice that no matter how we manipulate the figure, the sum of those two angles is always 180. So parallel lines imply same side exterior angles um, supplementary. Okay, these are the five theorems. That's a lot of them. So please take a moment, pause the video, and get them in your notes. Okay, there's two more theorems that we don't use as often in proof and they really are more lemmas. And a lemma is just a conclusion that follows so directly from a theorem, um, but we should, the, our book treats it as a theorem. So if we know that line A was perpendicular to line T, that is, this angle is a right angle, and we find another line, let's say through E, and we construct it parallel to line A, then this new angle formed here is also going to be a right angle. Okay, let's write that down. Okay, there's just one last theorem in this really, really busy section that we need to cover. And suppose you had two parallel, two Suppose you had three lines, and you knew that A was parallel to C, and you also knew that B was parallel to C. What conclusion could you draw? Now, it's not terribly complicated. 
but from this given information, what conclusion can you draw? Pause the video if you need to. Okay, it's a little bit like the uh, transitive property, but since we're not dealing with equality, we can't call it a transitive property. So if you guessed that, or concluded that A was parallel to B, you're right. And the theorem, which we'll do without proof because it's really it's kind of self-evident, is that if two lines are parallel to a third line, then they are parallel to each other. So if A is parallel to C, and B is parallel to C, then A must be parallel to B. Okay, Ramblers, I hope you get all these um, theorems straight in your notes. I really think that uh, it will help you working on the exercises. Thanks for watching.